Alright, our paella has been cooking. It's been about five minutes. You can sort of see that the broth is evaporating. If it looks like it's evaporating too fast, you might want to turn down your heat because you don't want the rice to dry out. Um, or if you want to, you can add a little bit of water. But I try not to do that because I, you know, sometimes can overdo it and then it gets too wet. So now I'm going to add my shrimp because it's going to take another 10 minutes to cook and that's about the right time for the shrimp actually to be done. And I'm just going to push it in and just let it sort of nestle into the paella. I actually, these are jumbo shrimp so that's why it does take a while to cook. I actually left the tail on because I actually think it, it looks a little bit nicer for presentation wise to still have the tail. So I just have three because I think it's a nice sort of number for arranging. And I really pressed it down to get it deep into the paella because I really want the paella um, broth to help cook the shrimp. You know, so I really embedded it into the paella rice. So we got that in there and then that will take about 10 minutes to cook. I'm going to actually add also there's more stuff coming. I'm going to put some mussel and then maybe a little bit of um, peas. So that's going to be added at the last minute because those don't take too long to cook. Now to help this cook a little bit better, I'm going to cover it with an aluminum foil. And this will kind of help retain some of the heat to cook the top part as well. In a lot of Spanish places, they actually just put newspaper because they're usually grilling the paella outdoors. Okay, everything's looking really good. See the shrimp has already started to cook and, and of course when it cooks it curls up a little bit. And by the way, it just smells wonderful. I think it's either the chorizo or the smoked paprika that gives it that nice flavoring. Really makes your kitchen smell great when you make paella. Alright, I'm just going to finish it off now with some of the ingredients that don't take that long to cook. And here I have some mussels, which I think is always fun to add to paella. It's really like a land to sea type of paella when you have the chorizo, chicken, and all the seafood. So I'm just going to place the mussels in. Now some people actually recommend cooking the mussels in a separate pan later. I mean, not later, they, they actually recommend that you do it earlier but separately so that you can make sure that it's cooked. But you know what, I'm one of those single people that don't have a lot of time or don't want to really um, wash a lot of pans basically. So I just like to put it in because you know, it doesn't take that long really to cook mussels. What I did do was really push it in and I make sure that the hinge that opens up is, is resting against the heat. And it's going to be that heat that will sort of spring open your mussels to make sure that it's cooked. Of course, don't forget to scrub down your mussels and pull out the, what they call the mustache of the mussels. It's sort of a little sort of stringy thing that's like a beard and you just pull it out and then just rip it away. It's pretty simple to clean and wash uh, mussels to cook. So this should take another five minutes what and I then we'll be like ready to eat. What I also like to add is a frozen peas, just because I love the color of the peas. Um, this isn't just frozen peas. I realized that in my freezer I had um, the peas and carrots. So that's fine. The more color the better, I guess. Um, so all I do is I get maybe half a cup and I just sort of sprinkle it on. And this just adds a little bit pop of color to your paella dish. I let this the frozen vegetables sort of sit out for a little while and then I rinsed it with water. So it's kind of defrosted already. And like I said, it won't take that long to cook. And see, it's just it's just another way to add a lot of color to your paella dish. And then once you sort of spread it around, then you're all set and then like I said, it should just take another five minutes and we should be ready to eat. So here we have our beautiful paella that's all ready and cooked. It's a nice, it smells even better. And like I said, what's nice about making paella is you can just bring it to the table in the pan that you cooked it in and just serve and it's ready to eat. Now before I dig right into it, I'm actually going to garnish it with some lemon 
because there's some seafood in it, so I always think it's a little nice to have some lemon in it. And then now we can just dig right in. So before I um, dig in and start eating, I wanted to show you what they call the sakura, which is actually the brownish parts. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's from the bottom of the pan. It's sort of that nice sort of crispy brown part. You can see a little bit of it, I, hopefully. Um, but you get the idea. It adds a nice sort of texture to your paella, makes it feel even more authentic and more enjoyable to eat. Enjoy!